So again, this is a map that Solar may be unfamiliar with. We don't know. We'll see how this one turns out. Again, this is a map that hasn't been in the map pool for uh, quite a bit of time, actually. But anyways, yeah. this is the Money Peak Showmatch series. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for tuning in. This particular match, this best of seven for $125 purely and entirely 100% came from the new subs in January as we promised we do deliver no broken promises here on base trade TV so thank you very much for joining us today but let's not forget about our other sponsor for the other matches today a small shout out and nod to Nog we'll talk about them more as we get into the final best of seven which will be select and golden after this series but for now currently leading three to two in the top left corner of the map from oh I've, I've mixed up the teams son of a <laughs> Okay, he's not from Axiom Esports, he is from Samsung Galaxy, it's gonna be Solar. You should've let the pro handle it, bro. I'm sorry guys, we got flustered remaking the lobby real quick, that's my bad. And in the bottom right, <laughs> as the Axiom player, it is Lutheran Hearts. Alright, so sincerest apologies, uh, I, I, whatever, <laughs> the players can't see it, like here's the thing guys, like, for those who don't know how Game Heart works, Players cannot see this, and this is not amateur hour, we just messed up twice in a row, it happens. It's bound to happen mathematically at some point, so uh, we'll just keep playing this out for the time being. A again, this is an Axiom player, and this is a Samsung Galaxy player. Small little mistake on my end. Uh, and I, I so full responsibility if either of the teams are, f I don't know, flaring with rage right now that we're not representing them properly, but uh, at any rate, this is Zerus Prime, a map that some of you may not have even seen because it was vetoed so often and used so little in tournaments. But we want to bring some more fun maps back into this. Now, I believe there's a gold base in the center of the map. No, isn't there a gold base somewhere on this map? There's no gold base, is there? No, I thought there was for some reason. Okay, ignore me then, I'm crazy. Uh, but the spawn locations of this map are not anywhere spawned. You can only spawn left or right, but the four bases are set up so that you could you could spawn either left or right. You could have horizontal spawns, it doesn't really matter. But you both can't spawn vertically. It's just a small mm. thing worth noting. There's wash in the middle of the map that help you get a bit of control. This choke... It's a big part of why Newkirk was changed a lot. And Zerus Prime was never touched because it wasn't in the pool long enough. So this is a map that can certainly go in the favor of Hart if he chooses the right engagements. But outside of the central part of the map, uh, there, yeah, there's technically chokes, I guess. But there's also a lot of really, really wide engagement areas. This ramp towards your third slash natural area is, like, huge. It's going to be easy for Solar to run amok if given yeah. the opportunity. Yes, this was this was only in the map pool for one season, uh, just one, and then it was immediately discontinued. And um, one of the worst things about it was this horizontal spawn. That's kind of why uh, Hart's checking it first, because if it was, then he would actually be in a very good position. It just you can so easily attack the fourth and the third of uh, the Zerg player, which they're almost always going to get right. So your attack that attacks at 11 minutes literally is just like a, a like a little skip over when you're there so uh, that's why a lot of zergs didn't like it but other than that there is a, a lot of jumping space for the reaper there's actually no ramp at the natural it's actually a, a small choke kind of like oh, tall to ream, was it yeah um oh, unless reaper actually already got one drone killed didn't he? oh no no just almost almost got it very close a couple things are going across the map here for solar hearts scv i think is going to be able to finish it. it's a very large map with a very long rush distance so these aren't going to yeah. get here in time to cancel the command center i don't think yeah no they uh, should. no not. yeah because uh, the scv would survive long enough so a little unfortunate for solar you can't really do anything else you can try and take down the scv but he's actually just gonna attack the wall there's something there to stop it so hey why not oh there he goes goes for scv uh, shouldn't be able to get it though. Speed is about to finish, so the Reaper does have to get out of there right now. Run, Reaper! Hey, Helen, let's clean up that lane. First blood. So this is a map that can get to that split map scenario, and back when like it was still a, a problem, you'd still see a lot of like <laughs> mech come out on this map because it was really easy to just siege up the middle part. But I don't think <laughs> we're gonna see that come out a whole. Uh, sorry, heart yeah. by any means. That was really annoying. Um, <laughs> the Axiom player Holar. <laughs> I'm mixing up the names now. <laughs> oh, he's actually just gonna go in here with two Hellions and a single Reaper. There aren't any Lings, but they are about to pop, oh, and that is two. why you usually don't try and do this, because if they do pop, then you just lost your Hellions for no reason. Actually, yeah, only half of those are Lings. They're the not I popping. The idea behind this, though, like, Solar's already spreading his workers out to minimize losses. Like, if you can get your value for the Hellions, then it's worth it. Is he actually gonna get these out alive? Okay, run Okay, away. no, you're gonna, you're gonna, it's okay, it's okay. I was gonna say, like, if he got those out alive, that would just be super dirty, but running for his yeah. life. Well, yo, we got some more Hellions coming. He <laughs> saves his Hellions. Wow, okay, they just <laughs> took a trip. 
and came back alive. That's fine. Literally hell and back. I mean. <laughs> uh, okay. We already have a third command center going down. The Overlord immediately spots it. There's nothing to kill it. So, hey, what up? Oh, uh, this wall off is so weird. This is actually like Neo Planet wall off. That's what it's like. Just like, yeah, three that awkward bunkers show. Or, or three, three deep hose, and that's it. Hart, once again, being a little conservative with those Hellions. Of course, he does have to go up a ramp, which is very dangerous. Um, you know, it's, right now, it's good that there's a ramp there because the Hellions can't, or they don't, they want to. Ooh, it's risky. It's risky. They lose the Hellion for it. But later on, this actually is like just a lot of space to maneuver with like drops and stuff, so. It actually favors the Terran more. I mean, look at how, look how much dead space there is in all the bases. Yeah. Uh, I, where is it? There's somewhere down here. This lava fall, by the way. By the way, just, this is the coolest thing on any map. I just want to throw that out there. I really love it. And for those who watched our StarCraft 2 Survivor series, this was the Tribal Council scene. Some of you may uh, have that nerd uh, that nerd moment here going. But anyways, uh, Banshee gets into the natural base. Unfortunately, without cloak, can't do too much versus two queens or three queens rather. So backs on out of there. Creep is being spread here, and Hart might have his Hellions here, but he can't. Like, that dive earlier was lucky. He's not going to be able to get back in there anytime soon. Hmm. Pretty standard game right now. We're really going to see the, um, you know, the map show its good and bad when Medivacs are out of field, and, and Mutas, of course. Yeah. Uh, until then, it's really, it is pretty standard. Um, the fourth, unfortunately, you do, like, it is out, like, jutting up toward your opponent, um, which is, like, technically what you don't want, but... That is a fourth, so you're kind of you're running out of bases to not jet forward when it comes to the fourth. But Bailey is also on the way. It won't need it though. I'm just running up. Well, Pretty we're talking hard. a lot about expansions, but let's not forget your natural base actually opens up later on. You've got these rocks that keep you sort of locked in and safe. Oh for yeah. Now. But you can always like, rocks. yeah, like it, because it's so far away, it's often not in vision, and a terror player might not yeah. see links chipping away at them type thing. This was the map where I remember I was watching the Muslim stream a lot. I, I I just started coincidentally when this map was in, and uh, he would like start experimenting like TVT and like even TVZ and TVP I think with like Mass Reaper because the Reapers were so good in this map that uh, you just like especially in TVT like they would actually just oftentimes win. But uh, yeah, you really need to put a supply depot back there. Um, some of the times I just I would just wall it off honestly because I would never check on it again. So. Walling it off seemed like the better option because every Zerg was tearing those rocks towards the end. It was like, oh. Well, two so. dropships heading towards the main, or Medivac's gonna unload right here. There are some links oh, coming Hellions. in, but there's actually Hellions with this. Yeah, curious enough, not just Marines, so there's actually quite, like, it positionally, if Hart gets behind this mineral line, it's gonna be hard to break this. He gets one gas geyser for his trouble. Well, That's he's not done. That's actually kind of a big deal. Like, he he's gonna keep. Most gonna keep mine if going. Oh god, drones are pulled in this. Bailings are coming back. But he just lifts up. Doesn't lose mm -hmm. a single unit so far. Hart doing pretty good so far. Uh, gets a couple of workers, really not a lot right now. But unfortunately, with Hellings being here, he can't really afford to unload this somebody you normally would. Yeah, uh, the thing is, he doesn't have to. There's so much dead space, right? So he just gets out of there, uh, no problem. And if he sets up, sets up another drop, he can uh, very effectively attack the east and west positions of Solar's base. One thing that's not going so well for Hart is his upgrades. They're uh, quite a bit far behind from Solar. Although this time the armory is going to actually pair up well. Does drop. Finds a nice little comfy it's, position again. It's weird seeing the Hellions drop, but they're actually so effective coming behind the mineral lines. He's got the Marines to buffer for the Hellions while the Hellions deal the damage. Lifts up before the Bailings can connect, albeit just barely, but still, the precision from Hart is really nice. Now moving up here towards the fourth base, Solar's going to have to pick. He knows the drop is still waiting to go down again. So he defends against either a huge push from the front or to drop towards the natural. It looks like, actually with the Mutalisks finally out, he can start doing precisely that. Yeah. Was actually, I think, looking to help out those Renovax, so he does uh, join up again, although he could have attacked the, you know, continued diverting Solar's attention this way and that. But again, a 2 2, quite a far uh, way behind. And actually, Blue Flame starts very early this time. I think he started a little bit later last game, but. Or two games ago, rather. But we are going to see Hellbats rather very early. And, you know, the game didn't go in his favor that time, but I thought the competition was doing rather well. Well, I like the composition of this game, too. Like, it's weird that the Hellions are still alive, much less that Banshee, too. Like, he's got a really strong force in the middle of the map. It's like the bottom line here for Hart. That's a lot of Bailing sort of meandering about, though. And this is... I don't know, Zombie Girl. This is... <laughs> There's not enough splash in this army, though. I feel like if Solar really, like, you know, he waits maybe a, a minute more and gets a lot of Banelings, he can actually, you know, push this army over. There's two Widomines. Well, another support, but... 
or five? Oh, okay, there's six, actually. That's pretty good. Oh. The Banelings are massing up quite nicely. There's 26 in total, but again, he's got a lot he's got to chew through here. With 61 Marines, this is not going to be an easy task. Like, Again, the big threat normally is like you don't want to spread because the Mutalist will pick you off, but there's not enough Mutalists for that to be the threat. The Viking is even here on the front line. I mean, the Viking and the Banshee are like, honestly, probably the least scary, the least contributing members of this army. <laughs> but they're still here is the thing. They don't need to be anywhere else, and they weren't picked off earlier. But looks like we got the uh, Swarm trying to move on in. Banelings will get hit by those Widow Mines. That's a huge hit. But Heart... Oh. His T2 has finished. Heart's still not on it, and there fi finally Solar attacks. Does go ahead and charge through. Good connection so far, and I think that is going to be enough to, yeah, go ahead and scare Heart away. And Heart dips dramatically in supply. Uh, luckily, with such a long distance, Solar's counterattack is going to be actually pretty slow coming. But he kills all the medevacs. The Hellbats are doing work on those links too, but looks like Solar will clean up this series in the end, guys. Four to two. Solar wins it all.